Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the AJRC ZUS5 and ZUS25 all-in-one flight controllers. In this quick video, I'm going to go over their features and specs and show you how to install them on a new build. First, let's start with the ZUS5 all-in-one flight controller. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the flight controller, you can find a quick start guide that contains the wiring diagram, some stickers, a 35 volt 220 microfarad capacitor, a group of 4 pin headers for connecting a radio receiver to the flight controller, an XT30 battery connector which is pre-soldered to 7 cm long 22 gauge silicon coated wires and 4 silicon grommets for soft mounting the flight controller. In terms of specs, the ZUS5 all-in-one flight controller features an F4 processor, an integrated 5A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, it can be powered with 1 or 2S batteries. It comes with pre-soldered JLC connectors for the motors, which in case you would like to reduce some weight you can remove and directly solder the motor wires to the flight controller. It features a Wi-Fi chip that is going to enable you to wirelessly configure the flight controller. It is using Whoopstel 25.5 by 25.5mm mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 41.6 by 41.6 millimeters and it weighs 4.7 grams. As for setting up and wiring the flight controller, in case you would like to use a Crossfire Nano receiver, you can simply mount it on top of the flight controller using the provided pin headers and these mounting holes over here, which is a quite elegant solution. You should note that in case you are going to use a Crossfire radio receiver, you will need to bridge the RC and R2 pads. And in case you are going to use an SBUS radio receiver, you will need to bridge the RC and SBUS pads. In addition, using the BB- pad, you will be able to wire a buzzer to the flight controller. Connecting an FPV camera to the ZUS5 is done using the camera video in, ground and 5V out pad. And the VTX that supports an input voltage of 5V is going to be wired to the video out, 5V and ground pad. And next to these pads you can find the S5 pad which is already pre-mapped to a soft serial pad, which you can use in order to configure the VTX. As for the Wi-Fi chip, this is a feature that is going to be especially useful when you are on the go and is also going to help to reduce the chances of damaging the micro USB connector. It is only going to work when the flight controller is going to be powered externally using a battery and I've already demonstrated how this feature is working on a previous video so in the description box down below, I'm going to link to the exact time where I show how this feature is working. Moving on to the ZUS25 all-in-one flight controller. In terms of packaging, inside its bag along with the flight controller, you can find a quick start guide with the relevant assembly diagrams, some stickers, an XT30 battery connector which is pre-soldered to 7cm long 18 gauge silicon coated wires, a 35 volt 220 microfarad capacitor and 4 M3 to M2 silicon grommets. As for its specs, the ZUS25 all-in-one flight controller features an F7 processor, an integrated 25 amperes BLLE32 4-in-1 ESC, 4 full UART ports, it can be powered with between 3 to 6S batteries, in addition to a 5V 2A BEC, it features a 1A 10V BEC, which is useful for powering the Cadex Vista or DJI Air Unit. It's using 25.5 by 25.5mm M3 whoop style mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 32.6 by 32.6 by 3.8mm and it weighs 8.1 grams. As for setting up this flight controller on a new build, everything is pretty much straightforward. So the radio receiver can be either connected to the ground 5V R1 and T1 pads which are located on the front side of the flight controller. You can also use these pads which are located on its back side. In case you are going for an analog setup, the camera video in pad is located over here and the VTX video out pad is located next to it. You can power the VTX either using 5 or 10 volts. And all the relevant pads for connecting the Cadex Vista or DJI Air Unit are located over here. So overall, as far as I can tell, this is a very capable all-in-one flight controller which can be a good option for a not very power-hungry synwoop. And as for the ZUS5 all-in-one flight controller, I plan to feature it soon in a build and flight video where I'm going to build and fly the Dave C1S Nano Long Range Quadcopter. I'm still waiting for the motors to arrive, so hopefully they are going to arrive soon 
and I'll be able to test it out. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.